In the world of electric utilities, of banking, of industry in general, the name Tom Fanning is something of a legend. He is also the chairman and chief executive officer of the Giant Southern Company, one of the largest utility companies in this country. You may know it through some of its subsidiaries like Georgia Power, Mississippi Power, give me some others. Alabama Power, Gulf Power, Southern Power. So you have a Southern a lock. Nuclear. Yeah, we got a lot of them. You've got a lock. Yes, sir. And you are a regulated utility, which for our viewers means that you get a return on equity or a we return. get a return on equity on the invested capital. We also have a very large competitive generation business, one of the largest investors in solar in the United States, all across the south half of the United States, all the way from North Carolina to California. Now you're director of the uh, the Federal Reserve in Atlanta. I'm the chairman of the board of the Federal Reserve and on the executive committee of the conference of chairs at the Big Fed. Which are the more interesting meetings, utility meetings or Fed meetings? Oh, listen, they're all children in the eyes of the Lord. They're a lot of fun, every one of them. Uh, how is Southern adopting, adapting to changes that are happening everywhere? We, rooftop solar is the obvious one, but there are other things, better batteries. Yeah, uh, you uh, know what I think? I think rooftop solar, distributed generation broadly, is an evolutionary thing. I don't think it is particularly disruptive. Uh, if you ever combine storage, that might be the thing that really breaks free kind of the traditional models. But so far, we're a price point away from that. Well, in terms of trying to think about what may be disruptive, one of the things we're trying to do is, I always have this concept about corporate strategy, that every element of strategy is offense and defense. So I'm trying to play offense with all these things. And the idea is to invent our future. You know we're the only utility in America today that does robust proprietary research and development. What I've done is kind of turned on the creative juices of our employees uh, by undertaking really a competition that will open up, I think, businesses of the future. For example, if we think about distributed generation as an investment opportunity beyond the meter, maybe we should think about a broader context of infrastructure beyond the meter could be distributed generation, could be uh, storage, combined heat and power, backup generation, a whole kind of concierge service for electric transportation, a whole variety of other, the, the adaptive thermostat, the Nest thermostat. We just announced one of the biggest programs in the United States, and we're, we're sending out adaptive thermostats from Nest. But the more interesting idea, I think, is, you know how, uh, you know, I used to be CIO. I always make the joke that stands for career is over. The idea of... For our viewers and listeners, we mean chief... Chief information in, in officer. officer. <laughs> That's right. But uh, the, the, the more interesting idea is this. If you think about kind of um, control chips that are just becoming ubiquitous, every asset in your house in the not too distant future will have a control chip. Let's rethink the idea of an adaptive thermostat into something more similar to a server in your home that will connect the Internet of Things. That may be the next quantum leap in energy efficiency. So we're working on a joint venture with Nest to do that. What does it mean for the homeowner? What is the future for the homeowner? Some people are saying because of solar panels on rooftops that electricity is going to get terribly expensive because you've lost some of your best customers. Uh, and uh, I heard actually uh, David Owens of the Edison Electric Institute, the executive vice president, said on this program that he thought that it was a justice issue and indeed a civil rights issue. Yeah, sure. If you do it right, there's really three elements we look for and we participate starting July 1st, 2015. We will offer rooftop solar as part of our regular offerings. But three elements you got to see. Number one, this idea of net metering and a full retail charge for the electricity. That's a bad idea. You want to use something called avoided cost. That is, you get a fair payment for the present value of your capacity. The second element you look for is a fair charge for the network. Uh, the power quality out of photovoltaic solar on a rooftop is not particularly good. The network itself, not only does it give you the ability to get electrons when your solar panel isn't working, it also provides as a leveler for power quality. It has enormous value. Pay for that fairly. Third, and the obvious one is, what do you do when the sun doesn't shine? So pay for fair 
backup generation charges. If you get those three elements in play, it is fair and it'll work, and we're going to play offense in that realm. You are one of two utilities building new nuclear plant, you bet. the Vogel plant. Yep. What do the economics on that look like? It's terrific. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, a lot of media, not you, but a lot of media will talk about, oh, schedule delays and cost overruns. Did you know that for all the cost overruns that we have had with schedule changes, the benefits that we have brought to customers have been overwhelmingly in excess of the costs? In fact, when that program, when that project was approved, we thought there would be a 12% price increase. Now we believe, even with the recent cost changes, schedule changes, the price increase will have dropped from 12% to 6 to 8%. And everybody stipulates to this at Georgia. This is not a secret. It's going well. I think, I think Llewellyn, when Vogel 3 and 4 is done for the $15 billion price tag for the 10 years to build it and design it, I think this project is going to be one of the most successful mega projects in modern industrial history. You are into all of the new forms of generation. Yep. They're not all equal, are they? No, there sir. must be very big cost differentials. That's right. Which one do you like the best? Uh, so uh, I am uh, probably well known as the guy that's all the above. When we talk about all the above as an energy strategy, there's one company doing it, and it's Southern Company. So leading the renaissance of new nuclear, building out 21st century coal. we got a coal technology we're starting up right now in Mississippi. Emits less carbon than natural gas. Also produces more domestic oil. Imagine that using a resource that otherwise goes unused, we're going to produce electricity cleaner than natural gas and produce more domestic oil. Tax base, jobs, it's win, win, win. Uh, enormous shift away from coal to natural gas. We've done that. Before I took this job, we produced about 70% of our energy from coal. Now it's down to, we think this year, about 32. Uh, before I came here, 16% from natural gas. Now about 48%. And moving that way. Renewables, we're one of the biggest investors of solar. Doing a little bit in wind. I'm not a particular fan of wind. Sorry for the pun. Get it? Fan of wind. And then uh, energy it. efficiency. Um, I'm not a big fan of wind either. <laughs> and well, I, it's great in some places. It doesn't make sense so much in the southeast. Well, you don't have a lot of wind resources. That's it. That's uh, it. You know, the months when you want it, when you want the electricity, July and August, are hot and sticky because there's no wind. You got it. You got it. Yeah. It also, and it takes up a lot of land. Well, so does solar, and in fact, I had a, a great yeah, annual no, meeting. It went two and a half hours on questions, all very constructive and friendly. But one of the points that we really thought about, I know solar feels green, right? But from a land use standpoint, it is awfully land intensive. To produce one megawatt of solar requires seven acres of land. And so, you know, there's this going to be this pushback, inexorably, I think, where when we think about wind and solar from a land use standpoint, right now it feels almost free. It is not free. And we've always got to have a balance. So when you say, what's my favorite? I love nuclear. I love 21st century coal, natural gas, renewables, and energy efficiency. Do your stockholders love you? Yeah, absolutely. You know, And how are you going to keep growing so they continue to love you? Oh, listen, you know, I think the infrastructure of the future, so EPA is coming out with this 111D proposal. That will require a further transition in the generating fleet of America. We are uniquely poised to do that in a carbon-friendly way, probably than any other utility in the United States. So look for that. Look for continued penetration in um, renewables. Watch out now as we move to more gas. One of the failings of the proposed rule 111D is they think by 2020 we're going to be able to make another big shift to gas. There's not enough um, uh, uh, gas infrastructure in the form of pipelines. For Maybe the, we get in that. For the public's benefit, what is 11D? Oh, 111D, I'm sorry, thank you. 111D is the Clean Power Plan, which is EPA's way of putting in place a regime that will likely uh, have as a consequence emitting less carbon from an electric generating resource. Tom Fanning, you're a very exciting man. Oh no, Thank it's always so a much. pleasure. Thank Good you so seeing very you. Much. Yes sir. Thank you.